you're as old as me, you might remember the old DOS or CPM days when there was no mouse, no menus, just text, and you kept your hands on the keyboard at all times. Now, while I'm glad those days are far behind me, I have come to realize that it's actually incredibly efficient to keep your hands on the keyboard and minimize the use of menus and the mouse. So when I'm trying to move fast in InDesign, I turn to its shortcuts. And the good news is that InDesign is full of keyboard shortcuts. They're all over the place, and you can really maximize the use by even making your own keyboard shortcuts. So the first thing I'm going to show is the tool panel. And every feature in the tool panel has its own keyboard shortcut. And if you want to see what it is, just hover over the tool. Here, the selection tool is V. The direct select tool is A. The type tool is T. You get the idea. Look at those, learn them, get them into your fingers, and start using them as quickly as possible if you want to be efficient. The menus, of course, also have various keyboard shortcuts in them. For example, under the edit menu, you can do a paste with Command V on the Mac or Control V on Windows. But not all of the items in the menus have their own keyboard shortcut. So if I go to the type menu, let's say I do a lot of bullets, bulleted lists. I might be choosing this apply bullets feature from the submenu. And submenus are very clunky ways. You know, you have to get the, the menu and then the submenu. And it's very clunky. It'd be much faster if I need to do this a lot to make a keyboard shortcut for this. So how do I make my own keyboard shortcut? Well, I go to the edit menu. And down at the bottom of the edit menu, I pick keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to edit my keyboard shortcuts. Now this dialog box is a little overwhelming at first for some people, so let me walk you through it. The first thing you need to know about is that you can have more than one set of keyboard shortcuts. So the default set is the one that actually ships with InDesign. It also ships with two other sets, the PageMaker 7.0 set and the Quark Express 4 set. A lot of people who are switching from PageMaker or Quark Express like to choose one of those. For me, in my experience, I got excited about this at first, and it, it turned out not to be so good. I decided it would be much better to learn InDesign's keyboard shortcuts and then customize some of them the way I want it to work. The Quark Express ones, I just found clunky, but, you know, try it. It might work for you. In this case, I'm not going to use any of those. I'm going to create a new set. So I'm going to click the new set, and I'm going to make this my set. You don't want to write over your default set. That could be a problem, because then you can never go back to the original. So I'm going to say this is David's set. And this one is going to be based on the default set. So all the keyboard shortcuts that I start out with in my set are the ones that shipped with InDesign. Now I need to find that feature. There's lots of features. I think there's over 400 different features that you can apply keyboard shortcuts to. So they've broken them down into product areas. Now, I know that that feature that I'm looking for was in the Type menu, so I'm going to scroll down here to the Type menu. If you can't find them in a menu, sometimes they'll be in a, in a panel, so those will show up in the panel menus. Sometimes they'll be more generic features, so you might find them in something like Object Editing or Text and Tables, but in this case, I happen to know the feature I'm looking for is in the Type menu. So I'm going to choose that product area. Right here at the top is Bullet and Numbered Lists, Apply Bullets. There we go. That's the feature I'm looking for. So I need to give it a keyboard shortcut. Click down in the New Shortcut field, and then type the keyboard shortcut that you want to give it. So I'm going to say, let's say, Command-Control-B. Any keyboard shortcut will work. Just pick one that makes the most sense to you, and if it's already been assigned to another feature, it'll tell you. In this case, it says it's unassigned, so it's free to use. I'll go ahead and click Assign. Don't forget the Assign button, because otherwise you'll lose it click Assign, and you'll see that that keyboard shortcut has been applied to this feature. Finally, I click OK, and I'm good to go. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a keyboard shortcut. So I can double-click here to select the text, and then type my keyboard shortcut. There we go. There's my bullet. I've got a keyboard shortcut that works for me. Now, true, if you work by the hour, you might want to avoid keyboard shortcuts because they might make you too efficient. But for those of us who are trying to get our work done faster, it's worth it to define as many shortcuts as we can and then use them as often as we can. Sure, InDesign has lots of features listed up here in the menus, but which features are relevant to what you're doing right now? For example, when you're editing text, wouldn't it be cool to get a set of frequently used commands that relate just to text? Well, that's where context menus come in. To get a context menu, you simply right-click with a two-button mouse, or if you're on the Mac with a one-button mouse, you control-click. 
By the way, a little menu just appears wherever you clicked, and it gives you features that are only relevant to what you're doing right now. Here I right-clicked on the pasteboard and nothing selected, so I get sort of generic features. But if I actually select some text, here I'll double-click on this text to select it. Now if I right-click, I get a bunch of text-relevant features, like insert special characters or spelling and so on. Let's say I wanted to make all this text uppercase. I could simply select it with a Command A on a Mac or Control A on Windows, right-click, and choose Change Case. I'll set it to uppercase, and suddenly, there it is, an uppercase. Panels also sport context menus. I'll click out here to des deselect that text, and I'll choose the Layers panel, and I can right-click on the text layer, and choose Select Items on Text. It goes ahead and selects all of those items on that layer for me. Like keyboard shortcuts, you don't have to use the context menus, but you're sure missing out on a world of good if you don't get into that right-clicking habit. Now in the next movie, we shift our focus from choosing items from context menus to customizing those menus at the top of the screen. Remember, the more you customize InDesign, the more efficient you're going to be. InDesign CS3 now lets you edit not just your keyboard shortcuts, but even your menus. For example, let's look at your file menu here. If you don't use XML, why bother having an import XML feature in your file menu? It just adds clutter. Or if you always find yourself searching for a particular feature in some menu and you can never find it, you can colorize it so that it just jumps right at you. How do you do that? Go to the Edit menu and choose Menus. To get rid of that Import XML feature, I simply open up the File menu, look for Import XML, and turn off the little eyeball icon. That's it. It's gone. If I want to colorize a menu item, let's say Save a Copy, I simply click on the word None and choose a color. It's as simple as that. Now when I click OK, and look at my file menu, that feature has been colorized, and the XML feature is nowhere to be found. Now the really great thing about customizing your menus is you can save them in your workspaces. We talked about workspaces in an earlier movie, and you may notice that there are a number of workspaces that are built into InDesign. For example, Basic. If you're a very beginner InDesign user, no problem, you could choose Basic, and that changes all of your menus and your panels to simplify your design to just the basics. Now it's going to tell you that it's going to replace your current setup with a new workspace. I'll click OK. And we can see that there's actually many fewer features in here than there used to be. There's also a really cool feature in the Workspaces submenu called New and Improved in CS3. So if you've been using InDesign for a while and you want to see just what's new in CS3, easy enough. Just turn that on and every new feature is highlighted. Or, in some cases, there's simply a, a modification to an old feature. For example, in Find Font, that's an old feature, but it has a new feature called Redefine Style when changing all. So, because there's something new about it, it gets highlighted too. So after you customize your menus, go ahead and choose Window, Workspace, and say Save Workspace, and you can give it a name, and if you want your menu customization to be saved, go ahead and turn on this checkbox and click OK. Customizing your menus costs a few minutes of your time, but reducing the clutter that you don't need and streamlining your workflow, that's priceless. I love keeping my hands on the keyboard as much as I can when I'm working. It's just all about efficiency. So you can just imagine how excited I got when I saw a feature that just about obliterates any reason to use a menu at all. And that feature is Quick Apply, and it's simply life-changing. Quick Apply started its life in CS2 as a way to apply character styles, paragraph styles, and object styles. And styles are a way to gather a bunch of text or object formatting and just give it a single name, and then you can apply it quickly. I talk about how to make styles elsewhere in this title, but let me just show you a quick example. Here in the Object Styles panel, you can see that I've made an object style called Small Drop Shadow, and I can apply it with a simple click to whatever I've selected. Let me go to the next spread and I'll show you what I mean. Layout, Next Spread, and then I'm going to zoom in with a zoom tool on this part of the page. I want to apply the object style to this particular frame, so I'm going to select it with a selection tool, and I could go over and click on that object style, but instead I'm going to use Quick Apply, and I'm going to show you how great this is. To get Quick Apply, simply type Command Return on the Mac or Control Enter on Windows, and you'll see the Quick Apply palette just appear suddenly in the upper right corner. Now all you have to do is type the beginning of the style name. In this case, I'll type SM. You just have to type just enough for InDesign to guess what you're trying to select. 
Then just press return or enter and it applies it. That drop shadow object style has been applied to this object. It's as simple as that and it's very very efficient especially when you need to apply a lot of styles. But in CS3, Quick Apply got even smarter and now you can choose menu items and scripts too. Very cool. I'm going to select this object in the background, this big colored box. And I want to apply, let's say, a feather to kind of blur the edges of it a little bit. I could go searching through the menus to try and find the feather command, but instead I'm just going to type again Command Enter on the Mac or Control Enter on Windows, and I'm going to type FEA. And it says, Oh, I bet you want the feather command from the menu. Yeah, that's what I want. So I type Enter, and it brings up the effects panel, and I can say my basic feather should be. Let's say, um, a quarter inch. Press OK, and it applies that feathering to the edge of the object. By the way, the Quick Apply menu is also customizable, so if I press Command Enter or, or Control Enter, and I go to this little flyout menu here, I can include or not include all of these sorts of variations from the Quick Apply. If I don't want the menu commands to appear, simply select it, and now the menu items don't show up anymore. If you want to be super efficient in your work, you'll definitely want to make Quick Apply your friend. By the way, I should mention, insiders at Adobe tell me that Quick Apply is so cool that the engineers there have dubbed it the Van Wheeler effect, after the engineer that came up with it. I can only say, sir, my hat is off to you. Now that you know where your tools and the features are, how to use them efficiently, you're ready to launch into the meat and potatoes, creating a new document and preparing the ground for your first InDesign publication.